the Six Foot Cook Radio, where we have fun, excitement, and information all wrapped into one. Today's episode is brought to you by the Dresser Room Hair Spot. For a healthy hair and experience conveniently located in the metro Atlanta area. Why? Because you're worth it. So please visit www.thedresserroomhairspot.com. Today on the Six Foot Cook Radio, we're going to be talking about love and entrepreneurship. Hopefully a helpful guide to those on the entrepreneurial journey, how to deal with their spouses and loved ones. <laughs> hey, welcome back, man. Uh, thank you for joining us here at the Six Foot Cook Radio. This is another fine episode of our Love and Entrepreneurship series. Um, we have a great, great couple here, one of my favorite couples. Um, we got such great response from that first episode, so we're here to do it again. Uh, we have Tim and Crystal Williams. Um, man, I'm so excited to have them here. Hey, guys, welcome to the show. Introduce yourself to the family. Let them know who you are. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yes, Appreciate that. Uh, first of all, we're honored to be here. You're doing an amazing job. Uh, I think that this is really exciting. It's something that, you know, people want to talk about. Appreciate and it's not something that a lot of light is shown on. So right. uh, you want to go first? Yeah. So everybody, I am Crystal. I am a psychologist and marriage and family therapist. I'm also a venue owner and Airbnb super host. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Way back on the couch. Right. Like, hey, look, we need to talk. <laughs> She's not a lot of hats. <laughs> Uh, my name is Tim Williams. I am a cinematographer, photographer, and uh, if you need video for your business or you want to highlight yourself in any special way, I'm definitely a person to help bring that vision to life. Man, that's what's up. So, woof. Okay, let's talk. Let's go. Right, so, <laughs> so we got psychiatrists. Psychologists. Psychologists, excuse yep. me. We got realtor, Airbnb super host, and event space owner. And then we got a cinema cinematographer. Yes, sir. Right? Man, how does that how does that work? How does that even work? Like that's a lot going on, right? So let me ask you this. Do you travel a lot with with, with, with doing? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we, we look like that because that conversation just came up. Yeah, you know, yeah. I asked him uh last week, what are your future goals? You know, because I'm I'm starting to see that traveling jobs are now coming to you and you seem to be very excited about them. Right. And while he's excited, I'm like, oh, they, you know, you can't do that one, you know, <laughs> and I can see him kind of like going like, oh, dang, you know. And so that's what made me check in and see, be like, well, is this something that you want to do? Because I didn't know that you wanted to travel with work. Right. And so for me, it became a little startling because I'm thinking growing family primarily like right. if it was just us mm -hmm. then it'd be like okay well you can do your thing but i'm like okay well as much as you go important to your career is as much as i have to take the back seat right. Right. so that's what so go ahead and ask the question well i you know with anything it's a balancing act right? right so i feel like uh while it is nice to be able to get the exposure in different you know states around the country it is also very important to make sure that you know the household is taken care of right. and so every day that i'm gone it's a lot of pressure on her to you know hold down the house in addition to still trying to build out a business so right. um it, it it can be challenging for sure uh but it is something that um we try to find balance in between right all right no absolutely we have to right like you know even with me and my wife you know like right now we have a newborn you know, and, and although it's not about traveling, it's 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 more about, okay, babe, I got this going on at this time, scheduling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I know you guys got a, a, a beautiful princess there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for us, it's just about, okay, I'll take, you know, clients at this time because I know your busy time is this. So we kind of do, the, like you said, the balancing act, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I have, uh, you know, I got my baby and I got him strapped on my chest. And, but you in the kitchen with me today, I got to work, you know what I'm saying? What time you get off? Okay, just scoop by and pick them up, you know, whatever, because she's with clients or whatever. And so, you know, it's definitely a balancing act and something that you want to, or you definitely got to give thought to. So here's a good question for you. Um, how do you balance or what comes first, relationship goals or business goals? 
because just like we're building business, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, you know, the end game is to build our business, right? But we have a relationship that we got to maintain, we got to nurture, we got to take care of, and you know, how do you what where where does those where do those things rank? How do you rank? You know, the business goals versus the relationship goals. Well, I think in a perfect world, the easy answer is relationship come first. Sure. But I do believe that I personally find myself in situations where I'm putting my business first and I'm trying to really pursue, you know, being established in, in, in certain spaces. And it's difficult because I'm only wanting to better myself right. for, you know, my family. Right. But I can't forsake my family. So if if I'm being honest, I think I think my business comes first. Right. I think it's a it's a very close second, right. but I'm I'm working on bringing it back in. Right, right. I, I think that's something that she kind of helps me you know, not lose sight of. Right. I mean, once again, though, it, it's honestly a balancing act. But to me, business is, is also, you know, your relationship ultimately is first because without things being proper in your relationship, you know what I'm saying, especially in like a marriage, you know, it, it's very difficult to prosper on the back end when you're neglecting things at home. So so let me, let me add but, this. But... Okay. You also may not have a home to go to if you're in the poorhouse. Right? <laughs> correct, correct. So, correct. so what I'm saying, I, I say all that to say, it, it's a balance act, and and so what would be maybe you know either, either or can answer, but how do you balance? Like which? How do you prioritize? I guess it's the is, is even better question. Um, business goals and relationship goals. You know, because right now, baby, look, we're trying to get a house, so we're gonna go hard. Mm-hmm. But you know, after that, you know what I'm saying. You know, we need to be focusing on the family. You know, we got kids, we're raising kids. We want to make sure that we're there for them. We're not always going on the road or we got nannies raising the kids and things like that. We want to be involved. So how do you prioritize and, and how far in the future do you look when you're making your business goals and relationship goals with each other? Well, I don't know how to prioritize it. I think for me, relationship automatically just takes proceeding even if I don't want it to mm-hmm. so like when I met him in college I was afraid to even become his girlfriend because I remember telling him I don't know how to be a girlfriend and a hustler at the same time mm-hmm. so for me I've always worn many hats and I felt like if I'm in a relationship that's going to have to take my time and my attention right. and I already knew that it was going to be hard to balance and so I think it's like a natural thing like the more you get to know somebody the more you like them the more you want to spend time with them. Right. And I follow my emotions. I follow my heart because I feel like we're going to all, not always, but you're going to, we, we need money to live. Right, right. So chasing the money is in essence kind of going to always be there, mm-hmm. but to build that connection and to share the experiences with one another, I think as I, I look at it as more of a priority. Mm-hmm. Like even when I was in, tw- in my twenties, I was like, well, I need a house. I need to do this. But I'm realizing a decade later, I still need to do the same things mm-hmm. to even if I've reached my goals, now I have new goals. So in essence, right. I'm still gonna always kind of be chasing something. Right. But had I passed up on the opportunities of connecting with someone, then I'm like, well, I would have done all this and now I reach all these goals, but I have no one to share it with. Mm-hmm. Right. So for me, relationship would take priority over business because I feel like that that business is just something that it is right, it's just right. it's going to be there you need it and now it's just like well how does this how does the business fit into my actual life mm-hmm. versus the other way around right and, and i think i think that's excuse me sorry uh but i i think right listening to both of your answers that's typical of our genders right yeah that, that's typical the man is about business he's going to take care of business bring home the bacon make sure the family's straight the woman is going to you know, make sure the family's straight and, and help you handle business, mm-hmm. right? And, and so I think that's that's kind of typical of that, and that's great. Um, but I know sometimes, in, in, you know, people in entrepreneurial relationships, uh, whether both spouses are or one or the other, I know that is, that becomes um, an issue because it's like, 
one person can't understand, right? They don't understand. Okay, why are you going so hard right now? I need you here, this, that, and the third one. Listen, if I don't do this, we don't have this, you know? And so it becomes, it becomes kind of sometimes that curse blessing type deal. So right? l- l- let me say this to that. First, I want to say she bring home bacon too. So, <laughs> let me just so, right, right, right. And so for, for me, it's like, she, I don't have to worry about if she gets it. She definitely gets it. And right. it's like a situation where I'm really trying to push so that we can be straight, but she also trying to push so we can be straight. So it's like, okay, well, who going to push today? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because somebody got to be with the baby. And right. how do we choose who's going to push today? Right. And I think the difference between the generational, the generation now, maybe not even now, but because the, because where we are now as a society, we can work mm-hmm. versus like back in the day, women could not work. Right. And so what you're seeing is, and that's what I have to tell them a lot of time. I don't want to be a stay at home mom. Right. I want to work. Mm-hmm. I enjoy working. I enjoy doing things that I'm passionate about. I tell them like, I didn't go to school for nothing. I didn't do all these years in school just to have to sit at home. Like I did it because this is what I'm passionate about. And so there was an interview that Michelle Obama did recently. Mm -hmm. And she talked about how for 10 years, she didn't like Barack. Mm -hmm. And she was saying she didn't like him because they had the two girls and it was raising the two girls. And it became more of, well, while he's trying to establish himself and he's doing all these things, she grew resentful because Mm -hmm. it's like, well, you get to go out and do all this, but what about me? What about the things that I'm off? And, And it also does something to who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. And so when I had our child, I didn't take a maternity leave. I was still working. I was still going. And I was explaining to him, there's a good and a bad side to that. Um, The bad side is you don't really give yourself time to rest and to enjoy the actual moment. But the good side to that is I feel like it helped me not have to go through postpartum depression mm. because I was still doing what I enjoy. Right. I have a friend of mine who recently just had a baby and she felt herself becoming more depressed because she wanted to work, but her job gave her the time off. Right. And she was just like, you know, next time around, I need to tell them I don't need this much time. I'm ready to go back to work. I'm ready to get back to me because that's how we identify ourselves now by the things that we do is th- like when you said introduce yourself, you know, right. like, this is who I am. I am what I do. Mm-hmm. And if you take away what I do, then it leaves me with who am I? Mm-hmm. Right, right. That's good. I understand that. So, so okay. You said you, you guys have been together since college. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, I don't want to date yourselves, but, I, you know, how long is that relationship? It's been on and off. Yeah. You could have just right. said, you know, 10 years, you know, we've been, we've been, we've been strong, you know. We'll keep it 100. We will. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, it's been on and off, but. Uh, when we were 20, 21? Yeah, okay. And we're yeah. now 35. Yeah, so okay, about 14 so, years. Okay, so, so when you guys met in college, the reason I ask is, okay, when you guys met in college, um, were you, you know, obviously, were you already in the entrepreneurial? lane of things or or it may be the mindset but like did you have businesses already when you met so when we were in college um we were in our senior year so we did not have businesses already but when i graduated i had maybe a few years in the work field um so maybe about four or five years kind of like working and then i went into entrepreneurship then okay um and that was a big tug and war on us and mm-hmm. on our relationship. Just me being a new entrepreneur and then him not really understanding the entrepreneur world, mm-hmm. the questions, right, that mm-hmm. he would have for me, not understanding the position I'm in. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, what's your schedule? I don't know. Well, when is it? I don't know. You know, and he's coming from a nine to five, right? Stability. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for him, it, it gave off distrust. Mm-hmm. Like, how you don't know this? How you how you don't have the answer to this? How you don't know this? And now, in hindsight, we mm-hmm. kind of joke about it now. Like, you remember when I told you this when you know, fifteen years or twenty <laughs> ten years ago? You know, and he was like, "Well, I get it now because yeah. now he's in the in the shoes." But at the time, that that caused a lot of friction. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so how what what are some ways that y'all you know because you're here today, mm-hmm. so you obviously overcame it, mm-hmm. right? So, what are some ways you were able to to work out to overcome those those challenges, those questions? 
So in terms of distrust, it was, uh, you know, I had to look at the reality. Has she given me a reason not to trust her? No. Mm-hmm. So I, I go with, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, trust is similar to love in the, in the sense that it's a choice, mm-hmm. right? So uh, I, I choose to do this every day. And um, in, in terms of just overcoming it, it was just either you're going to get with it or you're not. Right. And and my heart is with her and I'm going to choose to love and trust her beyond, you know, whatever measures of doubt I may have. Okay. And, you know, all these years later, I'm in the same boat. I get it. You know, she, we try to schedule now. And it's like, right. OK, well, what's next week look like for you? I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's a popular answer. Um, so let me ask you this. So it was times, you know, you, you know, I would say distrust and different things and questions. Um, feedback from your spouse on your on your business. <laughs> how are you able, are you able to take feedback? Like how important is being able to take feedback one for growth, and, and how important is it how the feedback comes um, in, in, in relationship? And I, I'll give you guys an example, right? Like so. I'm gonna do use all my bad stuff, baby. I tell on myself. <laughs> you know, I have to think, um, you know, I, but you know, I'm not perfect. And so, it was times, you know, in the beginning stages, where my wife would be like, "Well, maybe you should do this," or you know, maybe I didn't really like this, that, or third, or or maybe this should be this way. You should look into it. And if you know my wife, my wife is a researcher. She she she's gonna know what she's talking about before she says something, right? But you know, maybe a little pride. Uh, maybe a lot of pride <laughs> um, came in, but uh, it would be like, no, because I just immediately shoved off what she had to say. One, she wasn't in the field. You know what I'm saying? Um, two, I know what I'm doing. It, it, it's like, man, you're almost disrespecting me like I don't know what I'm doing, right? So I wasn't able to take the feedback, mm-hmm. not really thinking like, okay, this woman wouldn't say something crazy to mm-hmm. me. You know, she cares about the business because she cares about everybody's well-being. She's trying to help me progress. Instead, I'm hindering my own self yes. because I wasn't able to take feedback. So how important do you think it is to be able to take feedback? In? It's extremely important, for sure. I think that, you know, when you're in that silo and you're looking one way, you're not always looking at, you know, different outside perspectives. And, you know, we are 100 percent each other's biggest cheerleader, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're always going to be pushing each other. The, you know, problem with that sometimes, especially for me, is like she knows based on what she sees, hey, this would be a lot more beneficial for you. Right. But for me, especially, you know, earlier on, it's like, no, similar to you. You're not right. in the field. You don't get it, X, Y, Z. Right. But then I had to, just like you, take into consideration, hey, this woman wants what's best for me because ultimately what's best for me is what's best for us. Right. And so... I have this saying now, listen to the woman, right? Like she, <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it's still not easy, but I have to remind myself, hey, listen to the woman. She wants what's best for you. And even though you may not completely agree, if I choose to take anything that she says into consideration, it's going to flourish. Right. So that, that has been helpful for right. me. Right. So, so let me ask you then, um, how important, right, would you say or do you think um, is it if you're an entrepreneur for your spouse, this is a two part question. Is it important for your spouse to be in your field? No, I don't think so either. Is it important for your spouse to be a part of your business though? And what I mean by that is take some sort of role inside of your business to just, that is it beneficial? Rather, should I say, for your spouse to take some sort of role in what you do um, in order to, you know, help with understanding, help, you know what I'm saying, different things like even for to be able to take feedback, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, like, for instance, my wife, um, she did a lot of the background stuff for me. Um, she She took over, like, if I show you my first business card versus what I got now, you know, it's like, whoa. Um, I owe that to her. My web, my first website. If I show you my first website versus what I have now, which mm-hmm. I owe to her as well, um, it's like, yeah, I wouldn't be nowhere where I am today, right? Um, conceptually, 
so, but with her working in the business and being a part of the business with me, that gained the trust to when she started saying things, mm. I could trust it more. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's part of the things that have helped um, our growth in, in, in business. Not only because I know, you know, my wife and she's also, I mean, she, she has a food service background. That's how we met. Mm. But, you know, she's in an, in an entirely di different industry, which is her dream goal. Uh, but, you know what I'm saying? Over the years with her put, doing the input, working in the back office with me, doing things, seeing things, running the front of the house for me as we were building. It was like, okay, now, I guess you could say I built that rapport, that trust to say, okay, whatever she got to say about the business, now I can, I can take that. So, you know, for me, I guess you could say it helped um, break down the wall where I could actually listen mm -hmm. versus before it was like, look, you, you don't even do this. You don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I appreciate it, but no. Yeah, I'll, I'll listen, but no, I'm not mm -hmm. even going to go with it because you, you don't do this every day. To now, it's like, okay, yeah, I can see what you're saying. All right, yeah, you're right. I, I think for me, I don't necessarily need her to be in the business. Uh, the the trust came with the implementation of what she would say. You know, mm -hmm. like if, if, she, if she said something, it worked, okay, I need to listen more, right? Right. Uh, and And... It's kind of at the discretion of whatever couple, because everybody may not want to be, you know, like she right. got her own thing. Like I don't, at me asking her to join my business, that's one more hat that she need to wear, and that, right. that's a lot. Right. Like unofficially, I feel like you know couples should definitely have uh, conversations. Right. But I, I, you know, er everybody's different. Right. I think that it depends on how you choose to look at it. I feel like. Being a part of one another's business is definitely beneficial and it brings understanding. Mm -hmm. And I think if you looked at it in a different aspect, when you say being a part of your business, I, I can't hold no camera. That's I can't. Mm -hmm. All that stuff is not my lane. Right. Right. But I'm his social media manager. I'm mm -hmm. telling him, post this, this the caption. Why you didn't do a reel? Choose this song. Right. You know, I'm doing all that part. I'm asking him like and I tell him like. We have pros and cons, right? Even in my field, like when I'm doing on where I'm working on houses or properties or whatever, I'm not good with physical, right? So he might need to lift and put carry and all this other stuff. But and I'll tell him in far as far as his business, if you need help with a contract, you know, if you want me to write your contract out, do this, or I can I can jack up your emails for you. Like that's stuff that I'm good at. I write. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I feel like I feel like it's hard to not be a part of one of one each other's business because right. you want the other person to succeed. And if you're seeing ways that they can be better, you're going to step in. You know what right. I mean? I just think we're looking at it as being in the business as part, you know, instead right. of actually the other part. Just involved. Right. So like right. you said, you like with your wife, with the white website. That's a that's a website developer. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like these are mm -hmm. all different roles that still matter and they still go into play. So mm -hmm. it may not be in the actual field, but there are still things that I feel like you would get. Even if even if your person doesn't help with those things, your person might say, "Well, I know someone that can mm -hmm. help." That's still helping. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So right. I think it's I think it's you, you're doing that because you want the other person to win. Right, and I mean like so. You know, another example. Uh, Okay, my wife is in the hair industry, right? I can't curl no hair. Mm -hmm. Can't braid the best I tried. We was raising our girls. It don't matter. I did it, but you know, I I I don't do hair. Yeah. Right. But she said the way that you can be involved, you know, because she she you know wants the involvement, the care, um, the support, the shoulder support for her in her business, um, is just properly loving. Mm. She has all the love she needs. She can do whatever she needs to do, mm -hmm. right? And obviously, you know, I go to the salon. I move stuff around, like I say, and stuff like that. But for her, my uh, the biggest part for me to be involved is to properly love her at home, yeah. right? And so um, this is where, you know, you get relationships and you know, entrepreneurship is crossing, right? Mm -hmm. In order for her to be the best version of her herself as a businesswoman, um, she needs the best version of me at home. Um, and so, you know, th th this, I guess that's where the kind of question of, of involvement came from. Um, how important is it to be involved? And also, you know, can you or do you want your spouse to be involved 
um, because some people have their businesses to get away. You know, that's their getaway. Mm-hmm. Um, they, you know, don't, nobody wants to be involved in anything or they're just not that interested in what they're doing. And so it doesn't bother them either way. Um, so, I mean, that, that, that can go either way. Um, with that being stated, is, is there a time where there's been like, I don't want to get into like crazy detail, right? We don't have to get into personal detail, but is there been time, has there been a time where there's been a conflict of interest uh, with business, with, between the business and the relationship um, to where things may, you know, made, you know, a business decision had to be made and it was kind of a conflict of interest to what's going on. It may have been something financial or purchase or things like that. Um, and and if, if so, uh, you know, you don't have to get into detail about the issue itself, but just if so, how were you able to rectify the situation or make sense of it? You know, because sometimes in business, uh, you know, you may need to make a purchase or something comes about and it's a, a great deal, right? It's one of those, you know, I don't know, you got the best camera out in the world and you get it for a discount, even though the discount is still a lot of money, but you'll never see this again. And, you know, you looked at the, the situation and said, let me get it because I got to get it right now. And I, don't, I don't have really time to talk. Uh, and Okay, I'm just asking hypothetically then. I'm already painting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already painting the picture. So, you know, guy comes and says, look, Tim, I like what you're doing. I got this deal for you. You can get it right here, right now. You know, camera's going to cost, I don't know, $1,000, mm-hmm. right? Um, and you know this is going to take your business to the next level, right? This camera can do all the bells, whistles, everything. You'll never see it for this price again. You know, because it's cost fifty million dollars. The guy's trying to give it to you for a thousand, <laughs> but you know your budget's kind of tight at home. But you got the thousand. Do you spend it? And if you spend it, if it causes a problem, you know how can you rect- does it? How does that get rectified? Or should you just not get it? Should you just you know say you know what? If I can't talk to my wife, I can't buy it. Let me go. Start okay. <laughs> um, let me let me. I'm gonna lead with saying. We practice not living in a mindset of scarcity. Yeah, yeah. So, fortunate for Tim, he has a spouse that if he ever called, I'm that one. Get it, get it. I, but I, I'm a spender. You know, um, right. <clears throat> if he says, but what about what about? We'll figure that out later. Okay. Get it. If it's gonna take your business to the next level. If this is something that you need, this is gonna make you feel better, get it. You know, whatever, like, even when I tell him to shop for himself, he's like, I'm looking at, get it. I'm always like his supporter and get it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because living with, I wish I could have, should have, mm-hmm. that's something I don't want him to have to lose sleep at night thinking about. Right. I would rather lose sleep planning on how to set another goal to be able to recoup whatever money we stressing about right now. Right. So it's like, well, we got what we need. And mm-hmm. if this right here is supposed to take your business to the next level, then you're supposed to make that money back easily. Mm-hmm. So let's figure out how that works. Yeah. Right. Um, and and, don't go spend your mortgage payment. Okay. And, and that's, that's the next point. Yeah, so good. it's the camera. We're good. <laughs> 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 and so that's the next point is we also trust each other's decisions enough to know that you're not going to put us in a bad place. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. if we know that something is due and that's going to deplete us and set us back, I don't even have to worry about that even being a, a thought of we, we just we're not going to be able to do that. You know yeah. what I mean? We're not going to put ourselves at jeopardy or risk. And right. I think we are confident in knowing that neither one of us thinks like that. Mm-hmm. So that, that wouldn't even be a question. Yeah. No, I mean, she, she said it all in a nutshell. I think that uh, the way she expressed it was a good example of her being my supporter. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? My number one cheerleader. Like, she going to encourage me to go out and get it. I'm going to be the one that's going to think about, okay, well, are we sure we want to do this because X, Y, and Z? Mm-hmm. But she's going to be like, well, if you don't do it, X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. You know? So mm-hmm. it, it's, it's very helpful. And I think that uh, kind of going back a little bit, but also kind of changing the narrative on um, her being an entrepreneur first and then me kind of coming into the space. There's a whole lot of mindset mindset shift that has mm-hmm. to happen to go from stability nine to five, 
to I'm not sure, but money's still coming in mm-hmm. to I'll be all right. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know how it's going to happen, but it always does, you know. Mm-hmm. And so getting into that space has taken time, but it, it's also been extremely beneficial. I, I look at, you know, the opportunities that are afforded to us, mm-hmm. like, let's say right now, the average person wouldn't be able to get together on a Tuesday afternoon to just, you know, record, eat, relax together, right. you know, where a majority of people are having to be at work. Right. So um, it, it definitely has a lot of, you know, upside if you're able to handle the mindset shift that's necessary to re- really endure the lifestyle. Right. Now, it, let's talk about that, though, a little bit, right? Let's, let's, let's dive into that a little bit more um, and talk about mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, because oh, 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 I'm so sorry. You want to say something? I was. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, and then on the vice versa side, because I have to talk about me spending, <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he trusts what I'm going to spend, right? Yeah. So, and, but that also comes from knowing me. Like, I'm frugal, mm-hmm. but if I want it, I'm going to spend it. Oh, you know, right, like, right. I want what I want, but he also knows this, me wanting what I want isn't an everyday thing. Right, so if right. I want it, it's mm-hmm. something that, oh, yeah, she right. got to have it because I want it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm also that person that's like, you got a drink special or, you know, let's go to 25 cent wings. But if I see a house, I'm like, I want this house. He knows, like, okay, well, she's making the best decision for our future. And she's not just spending a lot of money on day-to-day things you know what i mean so i feel like vice versa um he trusts my decision as well as um an intelligence spender i would call it right right i mean it's a a level of trust yeah yeah a deep level of trust to know hey we got each other's best interest um we're getting back to the mindset to the mindset let's talk about that a little bit um because I, I hear you because I used to think the same way, right? Nine to five is, is stability, right? Mm-hmm. But realistically, I was posed a question, and I've actually seen this happen in real life. But I was posed a question: What if the business shut down today? Mm-hmm. If that nine to five closes today, are you really stable? Right. Right. So, and and then you you turn around and you said, you know, I don't know how it's going to happen, but it always does. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that. In and of itself is the is the trust process of entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. um, and and having the longer vision versus looking at things now, um, because I, it's it's like that sometimes. And I, I I'll be honest with you, I had a great first of the year, right? This year, a few weeks ago though, it was dry, mm-hmm. and then the calls started coming in. Book, boom, first of the year, and, and that's always usually kind of the slowest time for me. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you kind of get in the mind and say, okay, you're used to it, you're playing for it. But this year, totally different, right? And I think we can create what we want. It's just about how do we perceive things? What's our real point of view? Mm-hmm. Then we get what we're prepared for. Um, and, and, and so, you know, what is the cost? My wife talks to me a lot about what's the cost of things. What's the cost of this job? What does it cost for you to be at a job? What is the cost of entrepreneurship? You know what I'm saying? How can you, when you're looking at those things? So for you coming in behind her, talk to me about a few of the things that changed in your mindset to be able to not only, okay, remove the distrust or mistrust um, of her, but to also put yourself in a position to say, you know what, I'm actually about to do this thing too. I don't even know where to start with that one. Uh, it's, it's so many spots that I could hit. I think that uh, with me coming into entrepreneurship, you know, after her, I was able to see the example in her, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and, and to a degree, and this has kind of been true in the majority of my life, things that I want, I'm kind of slow to go into and Mm -hmm. I end up being forced into it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting laid off from work. And at that point, it was like I was already in my head saying, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. And never did. Mm -hmm. So it was a situation where look, you've been saying this self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. Here we go. It's time, Mm -hmm. you know. And so I probably was out of work. I don't know three months 
before I got my first job. And then it was a, a wedding. I was the photographer for a wedding. And I met a guy at the rehearsal dinner who worked in the movie industry. Mm. From there, that was the first time I met you. Right. From there, uh, it just took off. And like, I, it just, you know, has been like a slow network that has grown over time. And it, it was easily the best decision of my life. Now, was there hard moments? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and then going into the, the trust piece of like, I don't know where the next check is coming from. One thing that I've learned, you know, is I'm only as good as my last job. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I make sure that I show up as my best self every time that I get the opportunity to because it's not promised. Right. Uh, a lot of what I do traditionally has been relying on phone calls versus making phone calls. Mm -hmm. And that's a tough space to be in if you're not really good at what you do. Right. So, uh, you know, I've been fortunate phone calls have come in, but I do want to try to be a bit more proactive. And this is something that we've been talking about more lately. And, you know, creating my own business as opposed to just letting business come to me. Because if you can allow business to come to you and you're profitable, imagine what you could do if you created it. You right, know? And so right. that's kind of the, the mindset shift <laughs> once again mm -hmm. into, you know, the next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, man, funny story, right? <laughs> I'm sitting here laughing um, when you were saying you're forced into things. But I think that's. Sometimes that's a lot of us. I, I won't say all, but that's a lot of us. And that's definitely like my my story, my life story. Uh, you know, baby, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> so, you know, we're, 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 we're doing one of these too. Okay. And I'm sure she'll share this, but I, I'll share it right now. Um, but I remember it was a time and, you know, it was like, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. She wants to do her thing and she's been, you know, dabbling her foot out there but she was still trying to work and hold it you know hold everything down with me um and it came a point in time um you know she was working for this you know a, a salon uh one of the, the quick quick cut places and um she brought home after two weeks a 12 dollar check just how this 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 is how god works right like mm. you know the call the entrepreneurship call had been calling She's had the edge since a child. We've been talking about it. I've been talking about it. It's time, okay, do it. It's time, okay, do it. But not one to let go because we got to make sure, right? Stability, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll show you stability. I'll make it so you can put in all this time, you only get a 12 hour check. Mm -hmm. You know, because stuff is based off commission and, mm -hmm. and sales and stuff like that or whatever. And it was just like a dead two weeks. Mm -hmm. So that was like a waste of two weeks of her life. But that got the ball rolling. Because mm -hmm. then it hasn't been looked back since. Oh, yeah. Right? And even myself, you know, my wife had to encourage me. You know, I, I worked in, you know, hotels, worked for million dollar corporations, worked with million dollar budgets. I've done all these things for other people. And raising our girls, it was like, I just got to make sure the lights stay on, the bill, you know, all these things are good. And so to go out and do it for myself, I wanted to, but the fear oh, yeah. had you grip, had me grip, right? Mm -hmm. um, to like, no, nah, I can't make that move yet. Mm -hmm. No, nah, I got these kids where if this thing don't work for six months, then, you know, my old saying, a good saying, but an old saying, it, it, it's, it's good for understanding work ethic, but it's bad for pushing yourself for more. If you don't work, you don't eat. And I took that the way, you know, that I took that, you know, was a job. Mm -hmm. The way it was given was a job. Mm -hmm. And so when I took that into my life, it's like, well, you don't work, you don't eat. And so I'm not gonna starve. I'm not gonna have these kids start, so I maintain a job. And finally, um, just kind of doing some stuff for myself, was able to start dibbling, dibbling, dibbling outside, dibbling outside. And I, I'm the one that tiptoed out there, like, I'm holding on to this job, I'll take what I can when I can, you know, but and real, realistically, really not going for it. Because 
my security was I'm gonna hold on to this job. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really going after, you know what I'm saying, the business, my business like that. I'm still working harder for this man's business over my own because this is so-called security, right? Yep. And he could let my hand go at any time. And that's mm -hmm. what, what happened. They let my hand go. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, you know, all right, let's do this. And, and you know, I, it's, it's been some on and off stints where, you know, I've went back and worked places um, just to hold things down during growth times and things like that. But I could never, you know, and this goes to the mindset piece, I could never think of a job the same way again Definitely. or I could never put that much faith in a job mm -hmm. that way I put more faith in myself you know and that that you know you should often like that but it, you know when you come up in the system sometimes um it's very hard to break that mindset yeah, I, yeah. You, okay so two things programming and fear right mm -hmm. so uh we are brought up mm -hmm. thinking hey as soon as you get out of school, you need to go get a job, right? Oh, yeah. And it's just, that is literally how we are trained. It's like a like a robot station, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it's like very few people that are willing to step outside. Um, but, you know, then you look at, okay, well, the road less traveled ends up being, you know, a, a more worthwhile journey, right? right? And so I think that us choosing to do this is stepping outside of that programming but then there's also that fear piece, right? So the fear is what keeps you in that robot line. But if you're able to let go for any amount of time, mm -hmm. you'll see like this is a much better life for you. And I think that it's so difficult to combat what everybody outside of you is telling you. Cause mm -hmm. it's like, it's not just, uh, you know, friends, it's your family. Like people closest to you are gonna be like, hey man, I don't think you should do that. You got yeah. such and such going on, mm -hmm. you got responsibilities. Yeah. You don't want to, you know, but at the same time, like you said, at any moment, they can let that hand go. Right. So it's like, do I want to hold one hand here and twist myself up or do I want to use both of my hands and, and, and really feed into what I know is best for me and best for my family? Right. Absolutely. And what I'm going to say actually ties into what both of you all have said, which is the mindset of what people call stability. Mm -hmm is really consistency is mm -hmm. what they're wanting and consistency just breaks down into routine yeah. right and going to the program the programming and what we've been trying to do our human behavior for a lot of us right started when we was a little baby this is what you do this mm -hmm. is you know and so it wasn't really about stability it was just more about we are accustomed to having a routine that we stick to right and i hear a lot of people say well I got to keep this job. I can't do the entrepreneurship because it's the stability, stability. But it's like, it's really the most unstable. You know right, what I mean? Right. Because at any point, they can choose for whatever reason to let you go. You know right. what I mean? With no preparation or anything. Whereas on your own, the choice is solely yours. Right. You know, like, no, we don't know who our clients are going to be, who our future clients, our business is going to come from. But it's our choice to say, I'm going to, I'm going to push and I'm going to try until I get that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and so I just think about the mindset of when you think about it being, this is what stability is, that really isn't stability. But right. we've been trained to believe that having this routine is what's stable. And people, even though you know that it's not stable because you know that you can get let go of any time, right. it's just we are convinced that this is what, this is what stability is. Mm -hmm. And that's a good example of like the mindset shift. Like it's, it's still a part of programming in me now. Like I'm still quote unquote considering a nine to five stability, even mm -hmm. though I know that what keeps my family stable is not a nine to five, mm -hmm. right? Like it's so it's just like, that's a good example of the programming. And it's like, we still every day are having to make a, a, a choice to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So, and not just in the work that we do and in, in the thoughts that we practice daily, right. the things that we're saying to ourselves, you right. know what I'm saying? All yeah. of that makes a difference. I mean, to me, it's about the assurance, right? Mm -hmm. you, you reach a point of assurance in yourself. Mm -hmm. um, because like I said, I, I, I have had to go back and get mm -hmm. a job and hold mm -hmm. things down. I've had to, you know, there's been a few times I had to do that during just during my stint and in the last 11 years. And however, when I have done that, 
you know, you get the thoughts, oh, you know, man, it really is it for me, whatever. But then it's the point of assurance that you reach. And that's when you tell yourself, come hell or high water, I believe in myself, I trust in myself. You know, and I don't care what happens. It's a little difficult when you got kids, you know, it, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. But I don't care what happens, I'm going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And I promise you every time, last minute or what, mm -hmm. it has worked out. Mm -hmm. And it's been time, now don't give me, I won't say, uh, let me, let me, let me step back. 99.9% .9 of the time, last minute, whatever, it works out. There's that 1.1% where it's like, darn, nothing happened, what are you going to do? But that's where you got to build, you know, th th this is where business sets come in, savings plans, backup plans and all that. But you got to be confident enough in yourself, believe enough in yourself and and put a plan together. You know, I, I talked with another couple. Uh, we did this the last couple we talked to. And, you know, when I, the wife, she said she always believed in what he was doing because of what he he was talking since. And he worked the plane. Mm -hmm. So she she couldn't have anything but confidence in what he was doing mm -hmm. and it was going to work. Mm -hmm. She saw him moving the right way. So I think, you know what I'm saying, a lot of times, especially as our people like, share, and subscribe, people wanting to um, travel down this road, you have to have a, a, a plan. Mm -hmm. You got to stick with it. And, and you can't just have pipe dreams, well wishes, things like that. Mm -hmm. Why are you, what's your why? You gotta what's be your purpose? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's your purpose? <clears throat> what do you intend to do? Um, because if you don't have sight of where you're going, you're just gonna drift. Mm -hmm. You're gonna end up anywhere. So, with that being said, we've had a great conversation. But before we close this out, one thing I always like to do is ask, from your guys' point of view, what are three key points um, of advice that you would give to couples in entrepreneurship or aspiring entrepreneurs out there um, before they get into the business or couples that are already, you know, this is how you work this out? What would, what would three pieces of advice be? That's good. The cliche answer, of course, people always say it, but I, I believe it is communication, right? Mm -hmm. That has gotten us across so many thresholds because when you talk it out and when you explain where you're at, where you're thinking, how you're feeling, then that lets the other person, your spouse, into your world, mm -hmm. right? So if you're stressing about, I don't know where money is going to come from, money is looking low, clientele is not happening, then it's like, well, Instead of me just shutting down, I'm able to now express to my partner and my spouse, like, this is where I'm at. And now my spouse is able to say, okay, I get the silence now. I get the zone now. Like, I get where you are versus you're just kind of like battling on your own. And now, even with that, because I communicated, now it's not just a battle on my own. Now, because he knows what I'm thinking and processing, he can now add his own input, which could help. You know what I mean? Right. Like, have fresh ideas and just that encouragement or just that reassurance, you know, can also go a long way. So off back, I'm going to say definitely communicate as clear and as much as you as you can. We mm -hmm. believe in over communication. There you go. We talk a lot. Mm -hmm. What's your uh, next one? So I, I have my all three. Oh. For me. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me. <laughs> right? I also had time to think about it. <laughs> so uh, three. Number one, belief in self. Mm -hmm. Number two, communication. And number three, support. So believing in yourself uh, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, I think is huge. Uh, my example that I would like to use is there was a 16 year old boy that convinced the world that he was a doctor. Mm -hmm. Right. Like he believed in himself that much. So at least have that much belief in yourself and what it is that you're choosing to do for your livelihood mm -hmm. from a communicational standpoint. In terms of relationship, over communicate. Some things may seem trivial. Some things may seem like, oh, what if you think I'm dumb because I don't know this? Say it, you know, mm -hmm. like just whatever it is, because, you know, in, in a relationship, you definitely want the person that you're with 
to understand who you are, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, you also want them to be able to add and pour into wherever you are, right? right? And and then so that ties right into support, uh, being able to support your spouse in whatever it is that they're doing is huge. If if I if I feel like I'm going through something alone, uh, you know, I, I might not be as apt to doing it. Right. But if I right. know that I have support it's going to push me that much further. And so I feel like, you know, all, all three of those kind of tie into one another. I have my other two now. So communication was my number one. Yep. My second one is guard your portals. And oh, what I mean good. by that is yes. the openings to our bodies, right? Guide what you're looking at, guide what you're hearing, because that can make or break you, right? Yes. Um, for my dissertation, I did... Um, my dissertation was on the effects of social media addiction. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot about how social media can truly have a negative impact on us. Mm -hmm. Positive, but mostly negative, right? And if you're looking at it all day, every day, you're comparing yourself, you're feeling defeated, you're looking at, you know what I mean? So guard what you're seeing and what you're hearing and make sure that what you're choosing to see and hear is thing, are things that are actually truly going to benefit you and help you and not put you in a worse place where you're comparing yourself to other people. And then my third one is know your strengths and weaknesses, right? Mm -hmm. And be honest with yourself. Like you, that, the pride and the ego behind entrepreneurship has to go. Like mm -hmm. you cannot be prideful. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying like just, you know, but you have to be completely authentic with yourself so that you know, this is not a strength of mine. Let me pull somebody in. Let me ask my spouse. Let me, as somebody, because this is not a strength of mine. When you're trying to do everything in your business and it's not your strength, it, then it's going to ultimately hurt your business. You know right. what I mean? So know your strengths and, weakness, strength, strengths and weaknesses. And if your spouse is a counter to that, just so happens where your spouse strengths are your weaknesses, mm -hmm. then ask for help instead of being prideful. Right. I, I have a bonus. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right. Hey, y'all need a bonus. <laughs> Keep on dropping. Hey, we don't mind. We missed it. We missed it. So th this really kind of ties into exactly what she was just saying. But it's basically just uh, like she was saying: don't don't be like too prideful. Mm -hmm. Don't don't be like the person that doesn't want to ask for help. Uh, because especially as Black people, we feel like we have to do everything by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we feel like if we don't do it all by ourselves, then it's not all mine. But no truly great business was built by one individual absolutely right it, it takes a team so don't be afraid to trust somebody like obviously vet them but don't be afraid to trust somebody right. so that you can bring people in to help right. grow your business right. if, if you're if you're doing it all by yourself then you're limited to all that you can do and even though that may be a lot imagine if just like the corporations that we're working for, right? right. Instead of them trading uh, time for money, now they're trading money for time. They'd rather pay you mm -hmm. and take your time mm -hmm. so that they can be free as opposed to you trading all of your time just to get that money. Right. So I've always heard it like this. Two jobs are for two people. All right. Um, your salary is the bride the job gives you to stop chasing your dream. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And lastly, if you if you gotta do everything in your business, you don't own a business, mm -hmm. you own a job. Mm -hmm. So definitely, you know, I agree with all that's been said, the communication, the belief for yourself, getting help, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think oftentimes, and you know, we understand finances. We understand in the beginning, it may start out that way. But you have to, you know, that's what your business plan is for. You have to begin to budget for the staff. You have to begin to, you know, because you can't do it all by yourself all the time. Or there is no room for growth. Mm -hmm. You're going to be forever stuck, perpetually stuck uh, where you are. You'll never grow for more. And where you are now is all you'll ever get to. Yeah. Um, so, because you're doing the most you can handle. But man, look. <laughs> I have enjoyed this. Yeah, I loved absolutely. every moment of it. Um, I know you guys have too, but um, tell us real quick before we go your businesses, how people can reach you, um, 
you know, you, you like, hey, I'm about to lay on this couch when this camera goes off. <laughs> you need to talk. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously. But you know, tell us, tell us your business. How people can reach you, man. If you're in the Atlanta area or worldwide, he, hey, he'll travel. Yeah. He's right. <laughs> you know, like you said, the uh, where I, I have to travel to you, but she can do telehealth. So she, <laughs> we can reach you wherever you are. Hey, right? They got it. They got it. Um, you can find me on Instagram at CC Contradiction. That's Contradiction with a K C C K O N T R A D I C T I O N. I know that was a lot of letters. Slow it down. Oh, rewind right it. There. It's right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can check out my uh, my website at cckatl.com. Um, please reach out. Uh, I'd love to work with you. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Let's Be Crystal Clear. That's Crystal with a K. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at Be Crystal Clear. You can also find my relationship page at The Couples Bubble. Um, and then you can also view the venue, which is where we are at the Double V ATL. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right, great, man. So look, you have no reason not to reach out to him, man. Once again, guys, thank you for your time. Appreciate you. Family, thank you for viewing the Six Foot Cook. We're out. That was dope. That was probably good. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe and share with as many friends as possible so we can continue to get this great content out to you.